ROH final battle. I'm going to rip through the card because it was actually a fun little event, great matches. Um, but I want to play Tony Khan at the press conference and I want to talk about Dax Harwood here. So um, let's get into ROH final battle ring of honor. So again, I'm not going to go crazy, you know, reviewing this, but um, they were in Garland, Texas. And there was a zero hour kickoff show, Ty of Valkyrie with Johnny TV. Uh versus which good that they're together. They should just be together. Um, took on Jasmine Allure. Taya got the win, and I think that's where she lost her glasses. Uh the Von Erics, Ross and Marshall. So they also got a spot on Dynamite with uh Kevin Von Erich. Shout them out, of course, to promote the Iron Claw slash, you know, WWE. I mean, pardon me, AEW does this thing sort of thing sometimes, and it's really cool. It's cool when they do shit like this. It's very WWE-ish of them, but it's cool when they do this. So um, Ross and Marshall took on the Outrunners, who shut out the Outrunners there in OVW. They're also in ROH, AEW. They're just glorified jobbers. They have like this 80s gimmick where, you know, their name's Truth Magnum and Turbo Floyd. So I love those guys. Shout them out. And then, uh, but yeah, the fucking, the Von Erichs came out to Stranglehold and the fans just erupted for that it was a hot nice hot crowd and then we had a survival of the fittest qualifying match bounty hunter brian keith versus jack cartwheel okay but brian keith is awesome dude and he comes out to fucking sit uh he what's who is that slim thug i want to say and uh his he just comes out and he gets a pop and he's got swagger he's a real cowboy i want to see him beat the shit out of hangman because this dude's brian keith's a real bounty hunting cowboy and so, um, I don't know. He puts on a solid match every time with this cartwheel guy. You know, he can work. He can sell. It is what it is, you know. He'll never be a world champ or nothing, I don't think. But especially with a name like that. And then um, Daniel Garcia took on all heart Blake Christian. Blake Christian's cool. Garcia's a fucking dick wiggler goof. And uh, this match is whatever, you know. Uh, Tony Khan was backstage with an announcement. And if you guys haven't seen pictures of this motherfucker's face, holy shit dude you know people say people there's rumors about tony khan and tk and uh what he likes to indulge in and i'm not gonna make accusations or anything but i've partied enough to know what the fuck that look is on a motherfucker's face like he's geeked out he's geeked out so anyways um he was interrupted by eddie kingston Wonder why he wasn't booked tonight. Yeah, it's your ROH world champion, isn't it? Not on fucking final battle. Uh, Eddie was already booked for a big Continental Classic match on tomorrow's collision. Yeah, but this is Ring of Honor. So why the fuck do we care about that? Fucking child shit. Eddie still wants to fight tonight. Anthony Henry of the Workhorsemen walked up, offered a proving ground match. Blah, blah, blah. Complete garbage. Um... Triple A Mega Title Championship. El Hijo del Vikingo versus Black Taurus. Now, two good luchadors. I've put Black Taurus over in the past on this show. I even like Vikingo. But man, I mean, it was a solid match too all around, except for like the one botch spot that went viral where Vikingo is like trying to jump to the top rope and then moonsault and then he botches it a second time, botches it a third time and goes off, oh, fuck it, and just leaps over. And we've said it all the time, man. Grab a fucking hold. If you if you fuck up the first dive, sell it or fucking just jump on the motherfucker, dude. Do something different. And eventually he got it, but Black Taurus is just standing there like an asshole for literally like a minute. If I'm Taurus, I'm just hitting the ring and glomming this motherfucker. You know? And it's just it it just I don't know. It reflects goddamn badly. Um, and then of course the people jump all over it. And I'm not a guy who's like, Oh, every botch, whatever, but you can't botch and then botch and then botch and then go for it. Okay. You have to fucking just go for it. If you botch the first time, make a decision. I don't know. Um, good match, I guess, other than that, but you know, that's enough to drive some people away for sure. Fans chant fight forever, whatever. Vikingo gets, gets the win. Um, we had a world six man tag team title match. The Mogul Embassy uh, took on Brian Cage and like or their Gates of Agony and Brian Cage uh, took on TMDK, Bad Dutito, Kosei Fujita, and Shane Haste. 
they're all cool guys, but this match, I just started tuning out. I'm like, whatever. Um, the Mogul Embassy win. I quit match out of nowhere, just in the middle of the show. Tony Nese with Smart Mark Sterling took on all ego Ethan Page. K. Okay. <laughs> you know? All right. And um, yeah. Fucking Ethan Page goes, fuck you, near the ends of end of it. Um, Scorpio Sky returns, so he's just in Ring of Honor. Of course, I told you guys. When they broke up SCU, like I'm telling you, it's because Kazarian and Scorpio were like, fuck this. I'm telling you right now. And Daniels is like, oh, no, but it's great. And he's working right next to Tony in the buck. So I, I I said it months and months ago, my little conspiracy theory I had, X-Files myself. But, yeah, Sky's back. Awesome, you know. Uh, but this match was whatever, just a random I quit for no reason. So then uh, Nyla Rose takes on Vert Vixen. So Nyla Rose as well, just big signee first or second women's world champion in AEW and just, oh, you're in Ring of Honor now. And she just squashes Vert Vixen. Like, why is this on your pay-per-view, you know? Um, and then a survival of the fittest six-way. El- yes, folks, I'm still reading matches that are going on. So a survival of the fittest six-way elimination match, a.k.a. a fucking six-way dance, bud. Uh, Dalton, Dalton Castle versus Commander versus Lee Moriarty versus Lee Johnson versus Kyle Fletcher versus Brian fucking Keith. So shout out Brian Keith again. Fletcher looks great. Whatever he did with Callis, Callis made him look like a man here. Castle's awesome. Just a slept on talent. Commander is, I'll give Commander this. He's starting to, he worked on his kicks and punches and he's selling shit better. I will give him that. He, it's like he listens to the show. Commander listens confirmed. And then uh, Moriarty's just whatever. No one cares about this dude. You get, he's got to come up with something. And then Lee Johnson, same thing. Um, who won this match again? I don't even remember. Commander made it to the end. And then Kyle Fletcher snuck it out and won the television championship because Joe vacated it. So I, I don't know. Good for Fletcher, I guess. And then we had an ROH pure championship title match with Yuta and Filthy Tom Lawler. Love Tom Lawler, tuned out with Yuta. These pure rules and shit. I'm not not a big fan with this stuff. Um Yuta wins, beats Tom Lawler. Uh and then I think fucking Orange Cassidy came out or something, and then Brian Keith came out. So now Brian Keith is making waves in ROH but gets an AEW international shot. <sighs> then we had a Dre Jay Briscoe tribute match, and this is what I want to talk about. Um the Blackpool Combat Club, Moxley Danielson and uh, Claudio took on Mark Briscoe and FTR, Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler. Now, this match started great. Um, there's, for the most part, you know, solid guys working in this match. A Dem Boys chant comes out. Good, good for all that. Shout R.I.P. Jay Briscoe, man. One of the best. And Mark Briscoe, how good is he, dude? He's so good in the backstage shit. He made me care about the fucking Jeff Jarrett J. Lethal bullshit for a minute there until Aubrey got involved. And then um, he did cut like an online promo after this show or after like a collision or something. And he got, he talked with Jay White or Jay Lethal. And it seems like Jay Lethal might break off the team with Mark Briscoe um, against Jarrett and Sanjay or Jarrett and Satnam or whatever. But either way, um, he got, he makes me care, dude. He's a real guy. He's just real. Like you believe him, you know? And his work's good, you know? Even the redneck kung fu spots. Like, he knows when to do that shit. Uh, but anyways, this match is great. I love FTR. I love everyone involved in this match. I can't lie. Even Mox. I know people call him the plumber and whatever. You know, he's a solid guy. He's been, like, in this match, he was trying because he, he likes these guys. You can just tell. Like, he doesn't... He just sandbags motherfuckers he, he thinks he's above. I'm above Roosh. I'll sandbag. I'm above Cassidy. I'll sandbag him. And, like, even Cassidy, I'm not going to go, good, sandbag Cassidy, but, like, I would no-sell him. You know, I like when people no-sell Bucks and the Cassidy, and <laughs> Cassidy and the Bucks, rather. But, uh, sorry, it's been a long show, guys. <laughs> I told y'all I'd make up for my absence here. I'm trying to cover it all. But, uh, yeah, so, the match is great, but then it gets turned into a match with no honor. So, it's a fight without honor. And so then they start just breaking out all the weapons, tables, blah, 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 blah. Um, 
Danielson's the most giving guy in pro wrestling. He laid down for Roman on his way out of WWE. He laid down for everyone. Fuck just Roman. He laid down for everyone on his way out of WWE. And uh, in AEW as well, he's always willing to lay down. That's why Danielson's the fucking goat. He gets the business. Now, if we didn't see Danielson tap to Garcia and then fucking six months later just beat Garcia, you know, and we if we didn't and Garcia become a dick wiggler going fucking O for life in this in these tournaments ever since beating Danielson, you know, like those are the things where it's like, who did that shit get over? So like this actually does get Briscoe over a, Br- a Briscoe Memorial. And it literally seemed like all hell, all hope was lost. And then Danielson was kept strong and the match had to get turned to hardcore. And then Danielson took a J driller on a bunch of chairs, sold it like a million bucks. He's got a broken head though. He shouldn't be doing this shit, but you know, this paid off. This was a good look for Briscoe. The right guy won. It was awesome. But during the fucking match and um, I X something out and it, it went pretty fucking big you know, on X here. And I triggered a bunch of motherfuckers because of Dax Harwood, this video surfaced of, so in the middle of the match, Dax Harwood. Now let me paint the picture, guys. Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler are on Mark Briscoe's team, the ultra mega ROH baby face in in final battle, the last ROH event of the year in a Jay Briscoe Memorial fucking match. So they're uber baby face, right? And they're taking on the BCC who are fucking heels. They're trying to be the cool guy. Heels, skibbity, wah, wah. Moxley, uh, I come for blood. Uh, yeah. Skibbity, shibbity, wah, wah. You know, he's a cool jazz guy. And, <laughs> and, and like, they're, tr- they're the heels who stab people with fucking screwdrivers and stuff. So... In the middle of this match, there's a girl sitting in the front row and she's texting away and Cash Wheeler, or pardon me, Dax Harwood walks up to her and goes like, what are you, hovers over her and he goes like, what are you doing? Fuck. And then like batted away and people are like, she was smiling and it's like, yeah, she's embarrassed. Like, and and it's just like, okay, this is all it boils down to. And I'm not going to sit here and go attack FTR. I love fucking FTR. Favorite fucking team. Okay, this is what it is. Like, they're one of my favorite teams. You guys know after that year, you know, and then they brought it back this year for a bit too. But anyways, this is what it is. He either got emotional over some shit, and I think it's that because all the AW guys are real sensey lately. Nothing wrong with that. We all get it like it sometimes. Um, But real sensitive lately, and dude either got upset and then – barked at this girl out of like some weird fit of emotional kind of ego type shit, which is fine. It happens, right? I don't care. Um, or he decided to just out of nowhere, go into business for himself and play heel, which is also fine. I like no, like it's an indie show, but more or less. So like, whatever, you know, if that's what he wants to do, um, I'm not saying business for yourself, but like either way, dude, it's like, it doesn't make sense. So in the con, like, cause people were responding to me going, well, he's just playing in the crowd. He's just playing with the crowd. It's wrestling, bro. Relax. And even though I was relaxed, but I'm going to read my, uh, what I put out on X here. But the whole thing is that it's that he's either gone heel. He's either healing on the crowd for some reason when he's a mega baby face or or he got emotional because and he felt offended that this girl was texting now it spawned this whole discussion oh people should be she should be paying attention to the show you fucking marks dude this isn't dinner debonair this ain't dinner in a movie this ain't the movie theater still you be respectful and watch a performer at a concert taylor swift's on stage you're in the front row and you don't have your phone out filming them or texting your friends or sending Snapchats. Are you fucking joking me, dude? Now I'm a person personally where I don't, and this is where, you know, I'm coming from the right place. Ready? Because I'm a person who I don't, I don't pull my phone out when I'm living in a moment. I have, I'm one of those people where my girl's got to go, yo, get a flick because I just, I'm a dude who I like to just breathe it in and absorb it, you know? 
And when I'm really into some shit, I, for, I, the last thing I think about is pulling out my fucking phone to film it. Now, if you're the opposite and the first thing you think of is to capture it, good for you. I, I applaud you. Good for you because people are different, right? And that's exactly the point. Now they're shaming some girl. Like, so their whole company's dying. And this, like it is, it's just the truth. And, and this, and these people love, ROH and AEW. So why wouldn't they defend her and go, Hey, whatever. She came out to a show, was texting her friend and then welcome her back. No, instead they got up in arms. They're going to bully this girl. They're going to turn her away. They're going to make her never want to go to a fucking wrestling show again because a wrestler scowled her. And then a bunch of people talk shit about her on the internet. And that's what this elitist fucking weird gatekeepy fan base does. Okay. Whereas WW, all the WWE fans were like, dude, and including myself. And so that's why I know I'm coming from the right place because I don't, I'm not a pull my phone out guy, but I'm defending the pull their phone out girl because she could have been texting her fucking boyfriend. She could have a mom in the hospital. She could be texting, laughing, texting someone. Wow. I'm actually at wrestling right now. And it's a great time. Like I didn't think I'd be having such a fun time. She could have been texting someone going, who the fuck are these people? You know, um, make them pay attention with what's going on in the ring. People get offended. How do you make them pay attention with what's going on if they're not playing off top top? Well, because have you never watched TV, glanced up at the television while you're talking, scrolling through your phone, glanced up at the television and it caught your eye and you went, oh shit, this is some good stuff. Like these people act like they are not even human. Like everyone else is subhuman unless you agree with them on everything. You know what I mean? Because And then like they just pretend that they don't live life like normal people. So my whole uh, tweet here, I put out a tweet and I don't know. And, and like my, or an X, a post, it's fucking tweet, it's Twitter. Okay, so where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? I tweeted something out, it blew up and now I cannot find it, my friends. Um, here we go. I found it. So, um, yeah, it had 49.4 thousand views at Pro Wrestle Times on X. 49.4 thousand views on the tweet. It garnered um, 15 bookmarks, 376 likes, 46 quotes and quote tweets, and 89 replies. And probably more from people... I don't know, like there's accounts I've blocked on here from being crazy. So um, my tweet was just, I quote tweeted the video of it and I just wrote gross. Maybe somebody bought, brought her there and she's new to pro wrestling. He potentially just turned her off from it entirely now. Make them pay attention with what you're doing in the ring. How do you do that? Well, stupid dummy. Yeah. Listen to any. Dummy. Yeah. Listen to any fucking like Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, they tell the fucking story. Dude, we'd go in there. The crowd would be so hot after a fucking tag match where the roof got blown off the bitch that I fucking would throw dude in a headlock and I'd sit there for fucking 12 minutes until the crowd settled down again and we're like, fuck, we need something to be excited about. And then they would, uh, and then they would start cheering again. And uh, they'd get back into it. And, you know, by the time they'd rise up and fire up and all that shit. So that's how you do it. You get them to pay attention. If the rest of the crowd's going, holy shit, you're going to start probably paying attention, right? So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, let me just read some responses. So me saying gross is what it is, but I'm not like, fuck this fucking guy. No, I'm like, that's gross. Cause it is, he's like starking over a woman. And then people are like, look, she's smiling. She's not guys at pro wrestle times on X, go check it out. And she's clearly like, what the fuck? Like, fuck you. And her face to me is like, it looks like she's tweeting about what's going on or something. Cause she's like, what the fuck? Like I'm sitting in the front row, dude. You know how much these tickets cost? So 
Um, at X normal XOXO says preach. Um, this person at a Mullen says, what's he doing? Focusing on what some lady is doing on her phone. Doesn't he have a match? He should be trying to win. Exactly. Like you're in the middle of a fight is what wrestling is. And then I responded, kayfabe brother. Um, this guy says, how will what they do in the ring affect somebody if they don't actually watch you? Couldn't she check her phone between matches? Couldn't she check her phone between Matt? No, no, you don't own me. Maybe don't sit in the front row if you don't want to watch. How do you know she didn't want to watch, fucking idiot? So I go, snobby nonce attitude. Maybe she was into it. Maybe her boyfriend or mother texted her. You pretend like you watch wrestling on TV. When you watch it, you don't peek at your phone and occasionally glare up and see something interesting like every other human being on earth. And that was a five likes to 16 like ratio for your boy. And then he goes, cunty attitude. Maybe she could have waited to gaps between matches. Why? Maybe she should have. She would have been into it if she actually watched. How do you know she wasn't and she wasn't into it? Maybe she could have watched some some wrestling to see if she liked it before sitting in the front. What if a boyfriend dragged her and she didn't want to? You fucking virgin. Jesus. She wasn't at home. When I went to All In, I watched it all. <laughs> this guy goes, when I went to All In. I watched it all, bro, you fucking, like, these people are sociopaths, bro, he was glued, he didn't look at his phone one time, no peroni, he's watched that whole 10-hour fucking all-in show, oh my god, dude, these are the people we deal with, folk, and I just ratioed him to oblivion with every response, but I wrote, and she did watch wrestling, you mentally deficient goober, this was like four matches into the event, You're really going to pretend you didn't blink once or look at your phone during that eight hour event, you clown. Now I'm just mad. He called, he's calling her cunty or whatever she didn't. And I called him nonce, but like, I just said that attitude is, is a nonce. Um, she didn't in the clip and that's why we're talking about it. You mentally damaged, still sucking daddy's cock for pocket money without licking child molester. Whoa, dude broke him. And then, yeah, some guy came in, P-Dub Informer, was like, big man, LOL, more like big pussy. You got mental issues, dickhead. And uh, thanks, shout out at Informer P-Dub1 for standing up for me, but I just wrote, LMAO, I broke you. And then he goes, oh, sweetheart, sugar tits, you couldn't break a biscuit. If you hadn't started with calling me a nonce, we would have been civil. But no, you just couldn't take a random internet stranger disagreeing with you. No, I did, dude. We were just having a conversation. And then I wrote, you're not tough or smart or cute. Just a triggered emotional man baby crying on the internet. (laughs) Yeah, dude. I don't know. I don't take pride in this. It's ugly. It's ugly, this. But, like, look at how crazy that guy did. And then this person wrote, or pay attention to the show you're going to. I wrote, or she either paid or was given a ticket, and they should be thankful she's even there. It's also disrespectful to the wrestlers. I wrote, entitled, ungrateful. How? How, dude? Fuck, man. That's not what wrestling, like, oh, God. Like, you go to a concert. You go, okay, uh, pick someone. Alice Cooper's playing his new shit. I don't know. That was just a cool concert I went to one time years ago, and I never thought I'd see him ever. Shout out Alice Cooper. <laughs> and I saw him when he was old, and he put on one of the greatest shows ever. But uh, let's say, oh, you go to Alice Cooper. He's playing some new song he wrote this year. That's when you go get nachachos, bro. That's when you go get another beer, take a piss. You know, you want to be there for fucking, you know, for the hits, man. You want to be there for the for the bangers. When he starts playing new shit, it's like, yes, if you're the biggest fan ever, um, that's good. But when School's Out comes on, you're going to, you want to be in the fucking crowd. You know what I mean? So anyways... Um, or, uh, or maybe the interactivity made her a lifelong fan. And I wrote, Hey, I like that optimism. Cause I, cause maybe it did. Maybe she'll never forget that. And she comes back as a fan forever. That's a great point. That's disagreeing with me and giving me a a great, um, point. And then there's an offensive response to that, that I can't even see, um, for some reason. So it's, I write, I click on show me that offensive response and I'm, I'm not allowed to see it. Um, which is weird. So maybe she was okay with it. 
uh, a wrestler interacted with her. That's pretty cool. People just need to mind their own business, LMAO. It's not that serious. I wrote, she was minding her own business, and it happened in a public forum on television for the general public to watch. Right? So if you're insinuating I should mind my own business, you're terribly confused. I just don't know why it's such a big deal for some people. When I see it, I just laughed. Come on here, and it's a big deal. That's all. It's not a big deal. You seem to be, I responded, it's not a big deal. And then they said, you seem to be making it a big deal. Uh, and then this guy, newsflash OP, she's not going to sleep with you because she doesn't know who you are. I'm just saying. Wow. Yeah, that is, uh, that is just goofy. <laughs> and that's some girl said that. Like, okay, you know, not looking for her to, to sleep with me, bro. Um, I'm just stating a fucking uh, uh, cringe, you know. Um, but anyways, come on, man. Bret Hart would have done the same. And I wrote, no, he wouldn't have unless he was a heel. And I'm ratioing all these people, by the way. He's an entertainer, LMAO. It's all part of the show. And I wrote, baby faces don't heal on women, bro. Like, you don't. You, you want them to fuck you. Try and fuck you. I see nothing wrong here. All he did was look at her crowd interaction is what makes pro wrestling great. Yes, but he's the baby face. So he healed on a woman for what? Either he was genuinely upset and scolded a woman or he went into business for himself and decided to play heel while on Mark Briscoe's team in a Jay Briscoe tribute match. Just comes across super weird. It took, I took it more as him kind of teasing her. Nothing malicious or mean-spirited. Just a really, you're going to be that person on their phone at a live event? And I responded, she has every right. Um, this person said she's probably just a stereotypical wife or girlfriend who got drugged out by her by her significant other. Exactly. Dog, it's not that deep. He's working the crowd. If this is, and then my response is, if this is deep to you, you lack depth as a human being. Also, he's the baby face tagging with Mark Briscoe in a Jay Briscoe, Briscoe memorial match. He's not supposed to be healing on the crowd, especially women. Homie, it looks like he is literally just trying to be funny. I didn't think anyone actually thought it was out of discontent or malice. And I wrote, nobody said it's malice. He's clearly healing on her. He's supposed to be babyface. Why does he care that a girl's on her phone? It's either he got emotional or he decided to play heel while being on the maybe mega babyface team representing Jay Briscoe. It's weird. I commented. He wrote, fair enough. I was kind of opping on you in my original reply and didn't intend for it to be that way. So my bad. All good, bro. We just talking. Ha ha ha. That's at numnuts13232. Shout out numbnuts13232, bro. That's a real motherfucker. See, I got no... <laughs> it's exactly that. All good, bro. We just talking. And then this guy goes, shout out Melody Llama too. They go, you are cooking everybody in these comments. And then I responded with a chef. You're overreacting. He's working the crowd. I wrote, I never overreacted whatsoever. And he's supposed to be the baby face. Literally was teaming with Briscoe. I said it before. That's not a baby face working the crowd. Mate, it was three second interaction. Relax, man. I wrote, I'm a thousand percent relaxed. It seems like everyone with AEW in their name, because this person has at British AEW mark. That's their name. Now, it seems like everyone with AEW, their name has taken offense to a simple observation. It's like you literally called it gross. That's not a simple observation. And I go, it is gross. It's a simple observation, a five letter word. Does the word gross make you emotional? And um, yeah. This guy goes, boo fucking who? I go, bless you. So I don't know. There's like a million more. We could do this all day. But basically, it's it was just seemed weird to hover over a girl. Like, go watch the video. He hovers over this girl. And um, and yeah, dude, just does this thing. Yeah. Team Chaos, the little bros in the building, man. Oh, uh, shit, man. So shout out to IWC. They're, they're crazy, dude. But it is what it is, man. And what I said, like, I don't think it was that bad. It was just the truth, dog. Got to talk about my life as I see it. Um, yeah, Soraya's trending. Shout her out. I think she's wrestling Riho or something, so shout her out. Um. So, yeah, moving along the final battle. Oh, excuse me. Um, Final battle, man. Yeah. Let's get to – well, let's – so, you know, Mark gets the win. Uh, we got a proving ground match, Kingston versus Henry. Henry taps out, so that was pointless. Uh, we get Athena versus Billy Starks. Billy Starks is like 18 or 19. She's green. She's great. They had a solid match, um, and this was the main event. And uh, I'm pretty sure Athena is from Garland, Texas. But they kind of, I don't know, the ending kind of fell flat on its ass where it was botched up a bit as far as... Um, 
like just at the end, like Lexi joins them and she becomes the minion. And well, she, Lexi Nair was already with them, but like they just like kind of hug each other. It's like a fan, yeah, kind of thing. But Athena's been being a heel. I just think you, even though it's the hometown, you don't, you shouldn't do that. But yeah, let Athena reign forever. And I've gone to bat for her a billion times, bro. She gets over on Dark, gets over on Dark Elevation, gets over in Ring of Honor. Tony won't do shit with her in AEW. Like, you know, it's just why he's bad at business, why he's bad at booking. It's that simple. Oh, you'd be better? Yeah, I really would be. I know I would be. If he gave me all that money and his, and if you had his money, his, because you got to look at it like just me from here right now in my life. No, I don't have the connections. I don't have this and that. If he used his connections and played the Ted Turner role and wheel and dealed and um, did that sort of thing and let other people handle the other side of it, not active wrestlers, you know, um, it would be so much further along, you know, I guarantee you. And uh, it's just really bad when like, you know, the, like that guy, Will Washington, he was hired to focus on continuity and long-term. That's what he was hired to do, bro. That was about a year ago, year or so ago. And look at the last year. It's been the shits and nothing makes sense. Tournaments, battle royals, open challenges, beat the champion to earn a title shot. It's just the same fucking shit that doesn't get over. And not only that, um, look at, for instance, I brought it up earlier, man. Sky Blue. So Sky Blue like misted Julia Hart and was like, no, fuck you. So Sky Blue got misted, started going spooky. Missed it, Julia Hart, though, and was like, no, fuck you. I'm staying with Willow, and I'm just going to be a spooky good chick for some reason because Tony Khan wants fucking – we know what he's doing. He's thinking about that sky blue fucking leather, black leather photo shoot. And you go, oh, that'll be great. And then uh, – and then so basically she turns spooky, but she stays face, but then all of a sudden she's fighting Abaddon, but then Julia Hart comes in, and then they both jump – so they have respect for misting each other and sky blues, blue mist doesn't do shit, but the black mist corrupts you and transforms you into it's fucking so bad. And it's like, if this is Will Washington, I'm not trying to put the heat on him, but if this is Will Washington's doing, you know, like goddamn continuity and shit, this shit stinks, bruv. Like what the fuck is going on? Like for real, for real, for real. So, I don't know. Billy Starks got over in this match. This, uh, this event was what it was. Um, the story, I don't know. Like, I don't know what's separate between Ring of Honor and AEW. Nothing, basically. And that's a real problem. Like, a real, real, real problem. You know, um, Tony Khan just brought AEW to ROH's level instead of bringing, instead of making it clear that ROH is below AEW which is what he should have done, right? It's what UFC does. It's what WWE does. You make sure everything's below you. It appears that way. Optics. So they failed, um, but this event was fun. I will not lie. If you like to just mark out for some indie wrestling, ROH hits.